Greatness. 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 Welcome to the Renewing the Mind podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Sanchez. Joined with me via Zoom, my dad, Dr. Raul Sanchez. How you doing, dad? I'm feeling amazing. Like back in the day when Big Heavy D would drop somebody down a big tackle. You know, we used to have this saying that those who stay will play. Those who play will be champions. Once a champion, always a champion, baby. There it is right there. What up, Heavy D? And there's the ring kiss. Yes, sir. For those of you who don't know who Heavy D is, it's uh, Dave Marion, who's in the comments now from NDSU. Bison, brother. Bison. He cleared the way and as a tackle. So big, big brother. There we go. Away. So small dudes like me could just like brag in the end zone. So you could point fingers and get a 15 yard penalty. A, 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 A. Psychological warfare. Remember What's, <sighs> yeah. what happens on the field stays on the field. All right. On this podcast, we teach you how to renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty and find what's awesome about that. And we got a saying that says there are two times to be great when you feel like it. And when, and you, when you don't. don't. Correct. Today, we Love have a, a topic that is near and dear to your heart and then has been passed down to my heart and uh, apply it to our family. It's how I grew up and how I want my kids to grow up. And it's called, I I think I coined this, right? Dogs. You coined the dogs, but yeah, I dad's on the ground. The we talked about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's dad's on the ground. It's For those nice. of you that are hypercritical, I know there should be a T in there, but we caught the T off because there's an article, whatever, grammar, blah, 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 English. So dad's on the ground, which just really means that the best way to relate to your kids to play with your kids, to connect with your kids, to have a deep relationship with your kids is to get on the ground per se and play with them. Yes, correct. Get, get that eye level play communication. And uh, for the most part, if we're going statistically, um, dads don't really do that, right? That's kind of like a nope. mom thing. That's kind right. of uh, the female in their life. Um, come sit down and play Barbies. You know, the dad's usually stereotypically is in the recliner, the couch you know, we'll go out and play catch maybe, you know, if you're going on statistics and uh, stereotypes, but yeah. Um, yeah. If we're talking about this, that, that concept, like if there's one thing I could change with most men is literally we could just burn the man chair. Yep. Right. So, so dad's chair, like if you just got rid of that thing and you yep. didn't sit in that chair and it's hard to get out at night, um, you know, I've done it too, but that's the one area that where we could change it just by changing the play clothes and just laying on the ground before you know it, you have kids jumping on you. You become the jungle gym. Yep. It's like Christmas. You know, you spend 300 bucks on a gift, but your kid play with the box. It, the box is because it's experimental. There's, it's, there's so many angles. It can become so many things. A bike is just a bike. And when you're laying on the ground, you could become, you know, King Kong. You could become Yoda. You could become Godzilla. You know, you could become a jungle gym. You kind you of know. enter into their world of imagination. Yes, absolutely. The other, the other thing, too, is I think um, we talk about it before is just modeling. I think that we're leaving that generation that the the dad um, financially provides, puts food and meal on the table, and then it's kind of disconnected. That's kind of the older generation. Um, and that's no shade thrown to that generation. That's just that that was the standard, you know? Yeah. Mom raises the kids and the dad comes home stereotypically again. Um, and we have and got that's, away that's, from that's that. That's really like the hunt. That's really like hunter gatherer farmer. Yeah. So like they're, they're out, they're out literally making the money, literally, you know, farming something like that. So S sunrise to sunset. PO. Yeah. Like a, a PO, like a provider only dad. So the, yep. their number one job is to provide. And there are still a lot of people who play that role because it's the easiest thing to do. Cause we got trained that way. But I promise you, I don't know a man who understands the dads on the ground concept who doesn't open his heart and just will talk and cry and just be like, dude, I didn't know my kids were this into me. I didn't know I had that big of a role. And that's what we're trying to open up is this dad legacy piece to connect on such a deep level that you could be my age and, you know, 50 and still talk and still say a couple things that just throws kids back to, you know, <laughs> having kids walk around the house with deer horns on and shooting them with a Nerf gun, you know, like, yep. you know, and then, and then I get to play the deer and they just have so much fun when I fall over and my leg shakes and stuff. And then they drag me out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and Tyler does that with his daughters. It's the funniest thing in the world. Yeah, I got a couple uh, messages on that story. If you didn't see it, my daughters were the deer. I shot them with a Nerf arrow. I picked them up. I hung them by the blood, and 
I cut their guts open. Anyways, I got some <laughs> some 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 messages on that one. That was a that was a little too graphic for the for the two year old, but she had a great time. Um, personally, I just want to hit on kind of what it looks like from my point of view, and then you can jump into the six stages of play and go from there. But I notice a difference when I get eye level with my daughters. Um, and so, for instance, a couple of examples. Um, Stella loves Legos, and so she has a Lego table. If I pull the chair up to her Lego table, that's a different level of play for her. If I take her Lego set and wherever she's built it at on the ground or on the table, and I go join her world that she's already created, she's all in on that. If I say, hey, grab your Legos, bring them over here while I sit on the couch, and let's play here, she doesn't like that as much. If she asked me to play Barbies and I go into her room, sit on the ground and play by her Barbie house, that is the, that's the best, best case scenario for Stella. If I say, Hey, go grab the Barbies and grab Ken and Olaf and come over here and play on the couch. That's still cool, but she likes it better. If I'm on the ground, best case scenario is, is in her room, in her element, in her environment, the world she's already fabricated and created just on the standard, no science, no whatever behind it. She loves that the most. So, and, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that, you know, when your kids ask you, it's, Hey, come into my room or come sit down and play. And the part for me is like, that's uncomfortable, you know, like sitting in these little tiny Lego chairs or sitting on the ground by a dollhouse, crisscross applesauce. Like it's not as enjoyable or fun for me. It's easier for me to say, Hey, bring those things out to the couch. I'll chill, watch the basketball game and then play and she knows that she'd be like dad you're not watching her dad you didn't respond when i said olaf pooped or whatever the you know yeah. so that's what i've noticed and that's what i saw you do you know with with me and, and my brothers and and um valencia so um that's kind of the the personal side of it, it yeah there's a different level when you get down into their environment yeah and and, and it's as deep as like your kid's 13 and she's playing in a like regional softball tournament and you don't go to the game. It's that deep because that's their identity. I'm a softball player, you know, I'm a catcher or I'm a starting, you know, center fielder and you didn't make it a point to put me first. And that, that wrecks their identity. So I'm trying to build an identity as a kid. Like, who am I, you know, what do I stand for? What am I about? And yep. it's crazy to think about this, but like parents, we, we push kids a lot. Like, Hey, stop copying your friend. Like, Hey, you don't have to wear that shirt. Cause your friend wears it. But as you'll see here through the first six years of life, they are socialized to copy each other. They're socialized to, to herd behavior. And then we get mad at them because they're not individual yet. Like, but listen very carefully. They can't individuate until they have an identity. They can't have an identity unless you piggyback their identity and let them know that it's okay. Look, it, it, it's weird to play mommies and daddies with a girl after having three boys. And I didn't really know what to do. So I just because of what I know, I do, you know, what's called um, it's parallel play. So I kind of I teach it a little bit, but you jump in, you just follow orders a little bit. So I kind of play dumb and I wait for orders. And it's crazy that sometimes Valencia would pick the dad and I get to be the mom. So she'd go to work and I'm changing diapers and it flipped me around to make me see. And this is why we work extra hard to push how much mom does. Uh, I mentioned in a podcast, Valencia came home. We were, we got a debate on the way home, like who does more jobs. And she just has this thing where she demeans mom sometimes like, Oh, mom just stays at home. I'm like, but mom runs mid, mid, you know, our renew the mind clinic. Mom does this mom. Does. So we actually totaled it up and she came home so jacked up because mom has more jobs than dad. Right. And so, but it's cool as a kid, they get to play both roles and that's where they get to build an identity. Okay. That put me in a position to tell her, Hey, I saw you play center field. I love it. And then so forever in a day, I'd come home, we'd eat dinner, we'd go upstairs and we'd play mommies and daddies. And we'd had six kids. She had two sets of twins. They're all these little bears. And we're just changing diapers and putting them in swings and doing whatever. And they're, I mean, literally, you know, our, our, our top floor upstairs gets hot and I'm like sweating playing because you're yep. on the, you know, your stomachs, you're working your abs, you're like core like running around. It's, it's different. It's uncomfortable. It's different. But, you know, only just recently she wants to go outside and throw the ball. So that's what we've been doing lately. So all those things count. Like, I'm not trying to say if you don't get on the floor literally with your kid, but, you know, you go on a bike ride or something, that's same thing. But the developmental stages, if they're younger, literally getting on the floor and you become in the jungle gym, there's nothing better than having a big, strong male figure, your dad, 
who's laying on the ground you get to wrestle him and you get to pinch him and you get to do knuckles with them and you get to fight with them. And then you build all this language so that like the next two days, the next few weeks, whatever you guys say a shared word. Right. And then you guys just start giggling. Yeah. Like inside jokes, common link, common uh, conversation pieces to talk about. Remember when, or remember yes. when you did this and that. Yeah. Yes. So like on my, on my birthdays or father's day, uh, Terrence usually gets me a Yoda card. Sometimes you guys do too, but we talk about Yoda language. Um, and I always joke with the kids, like when they try to beat me up and stuff like that. And I would use a Yoda language and I would say, when 900 years old, you reach look as good. You will not. And I, I reverse words like that all the time with <laughs> like, especially when they try to beat me in tennis and I'm still undefeated and I'll just like a hashtag forever undefeated with the family. And I use Yoda voice and they just go seriously, dad. But when, when you guys are in a good mood or whatever, you'll crack a Yoda joke because Yoda is my guy. Right. So uh, just show, so you know, show, show the shirt off. I got to show you my Yoda dude. <laughs> Let's go. so we always say this once What's you know say try what does it say it says um can you read it yeah try not do or do not there is no try there's no try there is no try we always say this you that don't man, know what that you man don't writes know. like i write that boy's dyslexic <laughs> that's why i like him right he's my brother Yo, so this guy uh, adhd for sure bro. <laughs> it's like what we always say right like you don't know what you don't know but once you know you can never unknow so now my daughter is in the club and she let me borrow my boy check him out so when we go upstairs <laughs> i put valencia to bed this is my buddy so he'll get up on my shoulder we talk and he's just like i use the yoda voice and i just be looking at her i'm just like hey Yoda wants to know how school went today. And she's like, dad, stop. But then after a little bit, I put him in front of me and I start talking. And next thing you know, she's talking to Yoda. And she'll Why start saying, glasses that's on, being though. annoying. Well, because I had sunglasses on him, but, uh, oh, well, I'll say, but okay. So dad got into that tornado mode where I start just going, like we got too much clutter. This is, uh -huh. this oh. is confusing to her brain because clutter yeah. does slow down brain functioning. Yep. So we, two and a half garbage bags later, Valencia's room looks like, a nice room again. So I said, Hey, bring Yoda down and bring those sunglasses. And she goes, dad, remember you threw them away. So I'm like, uh huh. Oops. Mm, so now there. he has glasses. It never changes Valencia. <laughs> it never changes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I go into declutter mode a lot. And it's the uh, randomest moments. It's just random. They're always on stay home days that you're not supposed to do work. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Didn't you do this one on like the 4th of July? Or something? I think so. July I think so. 3rd. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So, okay. So th those are some, those are some ideas. I want you to think about this. Like, so in the practical, you know, get in their environment, in their level, get play the way they play, not the way yes. it's comfortable for you. Yeah. So let's go through the stages. So okay. there are really, hold on, hold on. wait, 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 wait. We got a couple of comments here. Uh, okay. Esther said, chase. It's the best. The kitchen Island is primo. Yeah. Yes. We, we do some there chase around the house. That's correct. Um, sun, and she just said sunglasses are the best. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Yoda, Yoda looks like a beast when he's got his sunglasses on. Six stages of so play. Six stages of play. So uh, the first two are Run through these infant and toddler. So unoccupied play, that's when they're kind of crawling around. Your number one job is to stimulate them. Um, and, you know, as that research came out more and more, you know, you just put, you know, things that hang in front of them and they can reach at it. You What's this one called? Twist. I'm going to put it so in the chat. Unoccupied play. So you're really just stimulating their vision. So you can put a baby on their back and then you just, just put something in front of them. Okay. Um, and they're really like just wandering around mentally and then they're just visually stimulated. So okay. they're still working their brain. Um, the second one is independent play. And this is when a kid is starting to crawl maybe a little bit. And so you kind of put them on the floor with a bunch of toys to the left and to the right of them. And they kind of scoot over and mess stuff, scoot over and knock stuff down. Um, they're scooting around, grab stuff. They'll fall on their back and they'll put stuff above their head and they'll, they'll shake it, play with their feet. So that's an independent play where they're tinkering, fidgeting, exploring, experimenting. I know it seems really weird because it's play, but every single play developmental stage develops a different part of the brain and they're developing how to interact with the world. It's deep stuff, but you just go, oh, just throw them a toy, you know? Um, and this is where, you know, it gets into that, like, you know, when we take about, take, when we talk about impoverished kids with no toys, their brain doesn't develop the same. And then they get into school and they fight different and they take, you know, they're just more triggered and they have a lot more issues. And so you have to really take a look at like, if you can get in that kid's shoes, get in that kid's heart, ask the question, like, what is he missing? 
not what's wrong with this kid. Yep. Okay. That's, that's where we take a look. Okay. So the ones we want to pay attention to the, the third one is onlooker. This is where it starts to get really interesting. So this is like an 18 month year old who can use some words. So an onlooker, that's like monkey see monkey do. They don't have any words really, but if you picked your nose, they'd pick their nose. If you slap your belly, they slap their belly, right? They're onlookers. So that's like Eliza right now, right? Perfect. That's perfect. So that's really where, where it's called vicarious learning. That's a social learning thing. They're literally picking up scripts as if they're reading text. But all I have to do is watch you. Okay. That's like when, when Stella was that age, I would tell her to give you a wet willy or I would just look at her and I'd lick my finger and go like yes. this and then point. And, and she'd do it for the next just, four hours. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, Pappy's the best ever. And all I did is just gave her one little, just nonverbal cue. Yeah. It's the funnest stuff ever. So that's the onlooker and that's observational learning. So you can teach so much just through letting them watch you. That's when it gets fun. That's in my opinion, that's where it starts to get fun. Like, and I'm not saying babies aren't fun, but they start. I to mean, they're really not they though. You, they give you feedback, right? They're really not fun until then. Yeah. Especially me. I look at babies and they cry. So I'm like, okay, wait till you're an onlooker. Personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't look as my ears aren't as big. See, look, my ears aren't so bad now. See what I'm saying? <laughs> you're right. Is that why you like them? <laughs> uh, it's one of the reasons. So one, one to reason. one scale of you. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, then, then it gets fun. So really about uh, two to four parallel play. And this is where like, for example, coloring or drawing or like when Valencia was little and she'd come down and she'd see me do yoga. Um, I used to do those on Wednesdays and she'd see me do yoga on Wednesday. She would come out with her tights and she wouldn't say a word. She would just drop down even as she was like two. And she would just start doing yoga with me. And that's where that became our thing. Or if I was on the floor stretching, she'd come and just copy me. So you don't have to say a word. So parallel play is like coloring. Um, so you can both have coloring books, even if it's out of the same book, but you're doing your own thing. So you're paralleling. You're not going to actually interact. You're not going to actually uh, engage, but you're really just sitting down doing the same thing. And a lot of kids who are like getting to know each other, that's what you'll see them do. Like if you had friends over for the first time and they're just engaging with your kids, they'll kind of grab their own Legos and kind of play Legos on the floor, but they're not playing together. It's not that they're antisocial or something. They're just feeling the waters. It's just like, hey, how do I get to know you? How do I? It's just feeling the water out to see, you know, what kind of friend you are. Okay. Um, if you look at this as social skills, it makes so much more sense. Okay. Uh, the next one is associative play. Associative play is like we're all playing in the dollhouse, but we all get assignments. So it's like turn taking and negotiating. So like I could be the dad. Valencia could be the, the, the mom. Then she drives the car to work and then she says, and you can cook dinner and then I'm cooking dinner. So we're not really engaging necessarily together. We're all using the same theme in the same place. So that's associative play. Okay. So like we're associates, like we're a team. So like a tight end is a different role than a running back, but yet we're on it. We're a team. Yep. Okay. That's where it starts to get fun because you can, from their associative play, people know who they can cooperate with and who they can't. Right. That's where Stella was, is at right now. When we play yeah. Legos, it's you are the vet and I'm the wounded dog with a bummed knee. And mom is this person on the corner asking for this. And, you know, it's like everyone has a role and has to fit in that certain role that she wants. Yeah. So that's the next one. So the next one's cooperative. That would oh. be Stella. And this is this is it's interesting because sometimes when Valencia is in that right mood, sometimes when Stella's in that right mood, they can play cooperative. Like one could be the mom, one could be the dad. And one's the boss of the other. Or when the stars student, align student. Yeah. Otherwise they both want to be the teacher. They both want to be the mom. Then they kind of, they don't want to do it. So then they back away. Yeah. Okay. So that's weird. So let So why? So here's another thing too, that just popped in my head. So in cooperative play, yes. the biggest struggle me and Stella have, even just me and her is sometimes I don't play the way she wants it to happen. So yes. she'll say like, you're Kristoff and I'm Elsa. And then we'll be like, we're riding down the hill. And then I'll be like, Oh, I got to stop for food. And then she's like, no, Christoph wouldn't say that right now. And I'm like, well, I'm Christoph, so I'll say whatever I want to say right now. Like I yeah. break her mold of like what's supposed to happen in her imaginary world. Yeah. So she she's in she's in what's called non-directive play. So she wants you to cooperate, but you don't get to direct. Yes. Right. That's where, and that's where so the longer like, oh, the slide, the sled crashed and we finished. She's like, no, it didn't. And I was like, correct. oh, it didn't then. Correct. So when I do play therapy <laughs> with the, with the kid that age, that's what I so I get to be, you know, whoever it is. Christoph and I'm kind of it's like you go on the sled you normally think go on the sled and start driving they get mad they're like no and they have to rewind like you you screwed up the play so yeah. they blow the whistle run it again like line it up right yep so like hey you're Christoph go to the sled so I literally go to the sled and sit there 
they're like, okay, now I'll get a horsey. You have to whistle. Okay. Now I get a whistle yep. and I'm waiting. And they're like, well, go get the horsey. I'm like, I can't see him. Yeah. I think he fell down. And then they, they fill in the dots for you. And then once you, here's, what's really cool. They're the and producer they, and director of the movie. Yes. You're and the when actor. they fill in the dots for you and you cooperate, you're trustworthy. They can trust you. Okay. So after a while, here's, what's really cool. They give you the reins. They'll say, Hey, I get to be Kristoff and you get to be Elsa and you get to tell me what to do. That's when you've made it in. I'm not that's there when you yet. Got invited. That's when you got the invite to the birthday party. I am not there yet. I am still being told what to do <laughs> and when to do it. Yeah. So you got you got to be more non-directive. Kristoff, okay, speak, so, speak so, now. So that cooperative play is really cool because like, okay, let's just get just get, talk about some meat here a little bit. So if I jumped on the floor when I came home and I tackle one of my kids, I'm like, so we had this language called got it or not it. Like, got it. So like I put Terrence in a chokehold. I'd be like, Terrence, you got it? And if he said yes, right, got it, then we're it's on. It's like it's like UFC. But sometimes I grab him and be like, got it or not? And he's like, stop. And he'll just walk away from me. Okay, so now I've entered the world too aggressively. I entered the world without permission. So I just go sit by him. And I'm like, okay, what do you want to do? And a lot of times it'll just sit there for a little bit and think through it. Then he was like, okay, let's draw. And they're just not at that energy level or something. So this is how deep it is. It's like if I came over to your house unannounced, rang the doorbell and be like, dude, let's play football. And you're like, uh, you didn't even text. I'm like, so let's play football. And you're like, I'm watching a movie. Yep. And then so you leave hurt. I leave hurt. We're both mad, right? There are these social etiquettes that kids learn in play that spills into childhood. You know, so there's kids that we would say, hey, ter you know, the boys have to eat, you know, come back in 45 minutes. And literally 10 minutes later, they ring the doorbell. I'm like, no, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. They'd ring the doorbell again. Finally, have to say, dude, go home. Don't come back tonight. Like, you're being a jerk. Yeah. And people don't like that I'm that raw. But then the kids turn around like me like, oh, you were always real. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. Those are play themes as a little bitty kid, but they grow up into personalities. And as you as your dad sitting here, grab you just think about where your kids are at. Let's go a little further. So those are kids all the way through kindergarten, first grade. Okay, now as we move into that cooperative play, it becomes cooperative and thematic. So Cell is that cooperative thematic. So we're going to cooperate, but the theme is these two are broken up. They're not, they're not talking, but you didn't know the theme. Okay. Or yeah. the theme is we are all going to work together as a team, but the house is on fire, so we can't go home. So we're just like wandering in the wilderness, but you don't know the theme. Yeah. Last okay. night I was one of the guys and last time we played, they were married. So naturally like a dude, I said, Hey girl, you look good. And she goes, dad, they're brother and sister. See like, well, <laughs> the theme changed. <laughs> that, that's, that's a different ball game. Now. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I know that seems weird. It seems like, uh, let's restart this. Start, start the play over. Yeah. But I know it seems weird, but every single line is a negotiation. It's like it's like you line up in the same formation, but one looks like a draw and one's actually actually a run. Yeah, right? one's actually a play action pass. Like it's yeah, like she, she handed it to the fullback and I was thinking option. Was Correct. Completely yeah. different. And and this is this is interesting. So how you two handle that conflict? Like if you go, hey, I'm out. If you're gonna be a brat, then I'm out. So many dads look for an excuse. Like, you know what? I try this stupid stuff, but it's just dumb. Like you don't want me to play. I don't really want to be here. And that's what they'll say to the wives. Like, hey, you didn't give her a chance. Like, oh, she kicked me out. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So if you're a dad and you have a daughter, you really have to do the non-directive. You just show up and take orders. And I know that sounds really weird, but it's you're gaining trust in that world. Now, let's fast forward to like, you know, Valencia is a preteen, so she's 11. So when she was a little bit younger, I could tackle her and stuff. And now I tackle her and she'd just be like, Dad, do you watch your hands? So say stuff like that. So it's all of a sudden just starting to change. Or sometimes she'll jump up on me and I'm like, oh, you told me to watch your hands, but like you're just all up on me. So again, it's her safety versus me trying to make her feel safe. Yep. So you be careful of those lines like that. Same thing with the guy. You just, just not ready or it's a wrong mood, wrong time. But here's the most important thing. If you can just sit. And so the language would be called holding space. Just sit and hold space. Just sit and be present. So when I go upstairs to put Valencia to bed, I'll just lay in her bed and I'll just lay there for a little bit and I'll pretend I'm snoring. And she elbows me. We go through this little bitty, you know, few steps. And then I'll say, so how you doing? Or how's your day? And we start talking. Um, and then the beans start spilling. And the second Stacy does this too, sometimes too, we're just like, Oh, why would you do that? You almost messed up. And then she you could see her whole face just goes like, she's just pulled the shade. And then I'm like, Oh, okay. So I'm judging. I'm not supposed to judge. So I sit there. I'm like, okay, sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. And then I back up and then she'll start telling me the story a little bit. And then what's pretty cool in the end, 
you'll hear her attempt at negotiating or her attempt at trying to make a solution. And then I can see that where her line is and now I can better understand where she's at. But if I jump in and try to judge her or push her, that's what happens now. Okay. High schooler, you have a daughter and she comes home and she looks sad and you're like, you know, grab some cookies and milk and you sit up on the table and you're like, Hey baby, what happened? Tell me about this jerk. And she's like, see, and you don't even get it. And then she walks away. Well, she's not at that level yet. He's not a jerk yet. Maybe, you know, he just didn't show her a phone when, when she said, Hey, who's texting you? And he hit it. So now you just offended her. So now you offended her because he's still my guy, but you just called him a jerk. So do you see what I'm saying? So you pour quicks in milk and you hang out and you're like, Hey, so what happened? You, you look a little down. And I always say this language and I don't mean to offend anybody. If I, when I, cause I say this a lot, I say, I play dumb. I act like I don't know. And so I'll just say, so what happened? Like you hot, sweaty, did you get bit by a bee? Like did you get stung? Like what happened? And you just play dumb. And they'll just say, Oh, it's nothing. Just a phone thing. I'm like, Oh, what, what do you mean? I I'm a phone guru. I know I'm a boomer, but I got skills. And then she might smile. And then you just kind of just check in like that. And then if you just let it kind of go, you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm here. Right. And then you check in a few minutes later or just kind of sit there, keep the TV off and just wait, give it a few minutes of silence. She'll probably be back or she'll probably text you what happened. Uh, and there's so many times when, when Terrence and Tave are going through that and you were a little, little more stubborn. We'd have to like go in your room a little bit longer Whoa. Uh, before you opened up. But if I keep my door open and I'll say, Hey, I'm willed. We use I'll be strong willed now. That's true. Uh, but you get it from me. I ain't lying. I mean, I, I, I always say you get it from mom and no one knows. I mean, everybody knows I'm playing, but so for real though, but like the boys, they would just come in and sit down and for a while, like 15 minutes are laying in the bed and nothing's being said. And then all of a sudden they say, Oh, and they'll start explaining something. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. And that's that all people say, Oh, you're lucky. Your boys are open or, Oh, you're lucky. Your boys talk or, Oh, you, your kids can communicate. I promise you that's because of all the years of playing where I have been approachable. Now, if you're like, well, now you tell me and my kid's already 11. I, I can't go back and play Barbies. Okay, right. But you can play dress up. You can, look, I admit to you, I don't like the trend. I honestly personally think it's kind of dumb. I don't like how my daughter moves, but like these, you know, trending TikTok dances stuff, she's in, she's in a competitive dance team. They move, they do all these skills. She'll come home and practice stuff. I get up and try it with her. And she's like, dad, uh, pr do this with me and I'll do it. We'll just have some fun with it. Um, she doesn't post it because like, I don't move as fast as her. Like we're not in sync, you know? So we, I was gonna say, we need some of these videos. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Like when she says you can post it, I'll let her post it. So we're working okay. on it. So I'm too stiff, too slow, whatever. Dr. You know? Sanchez, TikTok. Yeah. So, but, um, she laughs because one she was in the airport, she did a little thing and I just did a little couple finger dances like on her YouTube channel and it, and it took off. So she keeps showing me how many people it gets like, I don't know. Um, but she has fun with that. Like, look, as much as I want to get her off that thing, that's where her friends are, right? That's where her social skills are. That's where she's learning. Uh, we police it like, no, that song's inappropriate. Uh, no, you're not going to do that part of the dance. Like we police it, but I don't shut it down because I can see the freedom it gives her to like, hey, look what I landed. Hey, look at this, you know. They'd be like, you coming home and be like, dude, I could just smoke the curveball. Like I used to be afraid of a curveball. Now I just smoked it. So like, like, you know, like this air, she's working on an aerial and like, she wants to show me these things. And I tell Stacey all the time, I was like, Hey, when she does these aerials, can, can we put shorts on her underneath? <laughs> can we, you know, so I can still police a lot of that stuff. But at the same time, if I say, Hey, you're not going to do this or Hey, this is inappropriate. Now I'm judging her. And then she'll just hide stuff from me. So I have to enter into her world and open up that life. And then say, okay, show me. So I know it seems weird, but if you take a look at cooperative play as a kid, and let's extrapolate that. How would you cooperate play, let's say, with a 13-year-old daughter? Take a stab. What would you do? I mean, you said it, TikTok, look on Instagram, watch a YouTube video with her. Yeah. Something along those lines. Correct. Yeah, watch one of the people that she says influences her, you know? Uh, it's the craziest thing in the world when these, these kids come into the office and they're like, Hey, you know what? Yeah. What's up? I want to run away. Oh, where are you run away to California? That's a long walk. Uh, I'll figure out a way. Okay. Why, why California? You like the weather? You want the beach? No, this TikTok person, uh, they allow people to move in. Like if you're running away, if you don't have a, you know, and they, they just really go there. You know what I want to say is no, they don't want you there. They want your money. They want you to follow. They want you to act like they love you. They want you to get your influence.
they want you to buy products from them. They just care about the cash. But I can't say that. Right. So I'll say, okay, so what's this girl's name? They give me the girl's name. We look it up. We spend a five or 10 minutes looking at the video. Okay, so tell me why you like her. So they kind of explain why. We go to those few top videos. Why is this your favorite video? I get inside their head a little bit. Then we turn it off, sit down, go back to the couch, and we talk. And then the idea is this. Like, okay, so she seems pretty cool. What would it look like? So you show up there, and she says you can stay for 30 days. What would you do? She's like, I would get her to show me how to create, you know, make videos. What would, what would making the videos do? I'd have followers. What would followers do? I'd be popular. People would like me. Do you see the pool? She doesn't want to go to California because she hates her parents. She hates what she, she thinks I need an influencer to teach me how I could have followers and be popular. You understand? Kids don't at the, at the like, core of that it's being accepted. Absolutely. But see if at the front door, like, Oh, like, okay. Pretend that's Valencia. I'm like, Oh, you want to leave? You think this house sucks? You want to go to California? Like there's the freaking door. Like get out of here. Like that's what happens. Parents clash. And then how do you get to their heart? How do you, you know, and then somebody asks the right questions and hopefully that somebody isn't a bad dude. Right. Yep. And so, okay, now you take a look at, let's say a 15 year old guy who just, you know, applied for a job and didn't get it. All his other buddies are buying mopeds and he has no cash, you know, or they've just bought cars or his parents, his other friends are loaded. What do you say to that kid? He's like, I'm so freaking done with his family. I'm out like same concept, right? You sit down, you ask a few questions, even if it's your kid, you play dumb you do not judge and you try to get at the heart. Like, where's the identity crisis? All these situations are identity crisis. Like, I don't know who I am, but I want to be like that dude. Okay. This goes back to childhood. You could just come home from Walmart or Tinker Toys with the best cool thing in Lego set. The soon as a commercial comes on, oh, I want that one. Why? Because it's the latest and greatest. That's just a That's natural great. thing. I mean, tell me you don't look at every new driver that comes out. I just looked up the tailor-made sim driver number two today. <laughs> My, you guys all laughed because I post pictures of, you know, a new Glock or a brand new bow. Like, no. I'm, this is the year I'm upgrading. This is the year no, I'm upgrading. You, you want to upgrade per week. <laughs> I want to upgrade per season. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's normal, right? No, but it's the same thing. Like, I talked to uh, you students that um, are absolutely shocked that I know about video games. And it's like, you think about if a dad would take a half hour, regardless of what you think about video games in moderation, yeah. and you sat down with your kid that was playing Fortnite and you said, dude, what are you doing? Why are you chopping a tree that kids think that's hilarious. And then if they can hand you the controller yes. and you could, you know, try to move your head and you wouldn't be able to do it. Like it's, it, it doesn't have to be something like you get your own Xbox and you become great. Just grab the controller for 15 minutes. Yes. I mean, Correct. do, do if, if it's art, try to draw whatever they're drawing. If it's poetry, write a poem, try to do what they're doing in their same style. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's any, anything along the lines that they're doing, just do it with them. Correct. As simple as it sounds. Try to understand how this is making their identity feel. Cause our, our number one job as parents is to protect shield like bumper bowling to protect my kid's identity. Like, this is the mic. I'm, I'm protecting it. And I don't really know where it's going or where God's directing her, but I do know that I have to help her find her because if I don't help her find her, somebody else will help her find her. Like, yeah. Oh, you'd be good at this. Oh, you'd be good at that. And then she goes and she goes and she goes. It takes it literally, it takes like 25 years minimum, especially for girls to find a voice. Like they don't have their own voice. People tell them all the time, because this whole group think model with girls just really wrecks them. And it's crazy to me how many adult women that just like their goal for like whatever 2020 is to find their voice. And that's not a knock on them. It's just the society issue. They, yep. they run in packs. Like, you know, I mean, don't have to say anything. I don't want to get anybody busted, but if you have a significant other and the significant other is a woman, why do they go to the bathroom together? Like it's a socialized idea. I never once see Tyler jumping up and going pee. Like, bro, you're going pee? Like, save me a urinal. I'm coming. Let's go. <laughs> I'll walk with you. It's just different, right? They're um, socialized different. A yeah. couple okay. points I got. Uh, number one, I think it's crucial too. I, I know you. Didn't, it's, it's understood, but you didn't say it, that not every time you lay down with Valencia, it turns into a conversation. Sometimes you just say goodnight and you walk out the door. Yes, Sometimes correct. you go into the tape room, you sit on the bed for a while. And you give them an opportunity to communicate, but it doesn't happen every single time. And yeah. that's part of the reason where parents get frustrated, I think, especially when I'm in youth group and I tell them like, hey, did you ask them how their day was? Did you? Yeah, yeah. they don't want to ever talk about it. They don't ever want to talk yeah. about it. Well, you want to give them opportunities. Kind of goes back to Alicia's message on Mother's Day, that if we answer the questions now, 
the stupid, dumb five-year-old questions, then when they're 16, they'll feel comfortable to answer ask the right questions and we can yes. answer them. So it's like, you're almost just giving them opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and you're available for when they want to come with their hard conversation. Because yeah. if you don't ever have it and something crazy happens, you have not built into your family system an opportunity for them to communicate with you. Yeah, so take a look at this. Like think it back to a, you're a teenager, right? How long would you wait in line to buy tickets to a concert that you really want to go to? Well, mine wasn't concerts. Mine was uh, the Best Buy video games. Okay, so okay, you're gonna wait. You're gonna wait in line hours, right? Right, yeah. like six like, hours. Br bring my bring my tent. Bring hot chocolate. I'm yes, there. and that's how you know your hunger, right? That's how I know how deep that why is. Yep. As a teenager, if I told you to go apply for a job, <clears throat> how long are you gonna wait on a manager who's not there to give you an ask? Well, I'm driving by, and if the door is halfway closed, I'm I'm driving. Yeah, you answer. Hey, is there a manager on duty? No, I'm out. And then when I say, hey, did you get an app? You're like, dude, I, I went there. I, I promise you, you can call Joe. I asked this dude, Joe, the manager wasn't in. You call right? three times and hang up. They didn't answer. <laughs> okay. If I'm your daughter and you, you show up to bed and you're all huffy and puffy and sit down and be like, hey, anything important happened today? And I go, no, just because I'm playing hard to get. And you go, all right. And you pray and you leave. Like she knows. Like you. So I get what you're saying. And yes, not every single night's epiphany and Valencia just like drops bombs. In fact, most nights, it's just our normal routine. Yep. But I always lay there for five minutes, maybe, maybe three minutes, hug her and kiss her and just hang out for a little bit, ask her a couple of questions. And then we do the prayer thing. In fact, most of the time she says, sleep with me, lay here tonight. Like, why don't you have a sleepover, spend the night. We play this little game and then, you know, we do our routine and go. But then other times it's like, hey, daddy. And then it's a lot. Yeah. Right. And then, but even then, sometimes at night it doesn't happen, but the next day. Yeah, because you don't know what day she really wants to communicate with that, and you right. might not give her an opportunity. Correct. So I'm always, I'm always showing her that I'm way, I'm willing to stand in the line, yep. and I got my sleeping bag in my tent, and if you need me to pull it out, I'm, I'll pull an all nighter because I'll listen. Yep. Right. I'm not trying to dip out as fast as I can, and that's you have to pay, you have to trust me when I say your kid knows you. Your kid knows that you showed up on Black Friday and spent seven hours waiting for binoculars at Shields. And you show up and lay on the bed and you give two minutes of like, hey, is there anything important I need to know? Mom says you want to talk. Yep. And they go, no, nah, I already talked to mom. And you're like, okay, bet. Like, if, is that is really that? Is that how that's how hard you're going to try to crack the safe of your daughter's heart? Come on. Yep. Right. A um, couple comments here. We got Bridget suggested that when me and Stella are playing that uh, when you are being told what to do, ask more questions. How would he do this? Can we eat lunch? It will give her ideas to communicate. And then you kind of, you hit on that. Yeah. Uh, Wendy said that they would, she would love to see you doing these uh, TikToks. So I think, <laughs> I think we all speak when uh, we, we want to see some with, of these dances. With my boy or no boy? Um, mom corrected you and they're not TikToks. They are YouTube short videos. Oh, okay. You don't there allow we, her to have TikTok. See, see? I Let didn't the even record ask the right question. State, she doesn't have TikTok. She doesn't have TikTok. She does YouTube short videos. Oh, I did say um, YouTube. I didn't just yeah. call them shorts. Okay. And then Bridget asked the question, Tyler, were you allowed to listen to TikTok type music? And the answer was no. I was only allowed to listen to K-Love. Not true. When we worked out. No. One time when we played video games, you got stuck on a, a Flo Riders or a Timberland song. And that was only a non-Christian okay. song we could play. Okay. Okay. When we worked out, number one. Because we, we would listen to Journey and stuff when we worked out. No, I would listen to Three Doors Down. Yes. And and that you, was because but, you read one article that one time one dude went to church or something. <laughs> no, I just listened to the lyrics. Uh, no. So No. And when we played video games, tell me I'm lying that Timberland didn't help us dominate Halo. Yeah, one song. Huh? One, one, song, one song was allowed in the house. Me, you, and Martindale and some rando dude who joined us. We could just dominate for hours. Uh. That was before your reaction time got slower than molasses. Yes, yeah, before I needed these. That's actually. right. <laughs> um, yeah, the journey is not workout music. I agree. It was three doors down. Oh. Um, anyways, question. Is there a stage that is more important than other stages? Or is there a stage that's that matters most in that six, you know, infant to preschool and then or first grade and then on? Is it is each stage just as important? Like, is there a stage that matters more in the development? Yeah, the, uh, the where, where it really hits is that onlooker stage, which is like when a kid, like 18 months, 
18 months is when they start to have uh, what's called object permanent. So like before 18 months, you could hide a pin. You could click a pin, a flashlight pin or whatever, laser pin, and then literally hide it under a piece of paper. And a kid will look at the piece of paper and walk away. Thinks it's gone. Literally within a day of 18 months, they'll move the news. They'll move the paper out of the way and know it's there. So they have this thing called object permanence. So they know that things are more permanent than just this. What's in the eye. Okay. So kids start to get sneaky right there. So they can go in the kitchen and say, can I have a cookie? And you say no. And they know you can't see me because the wall's here. They know. So they'll yeah. sneak. Oh, that's when they hide it. Start hiding it behind their back. That's when they start hiding it and they got cookies over here or, you know, they go hide behind another wall and you're like, did you poop? And you're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, we went to Nana and grandpa's Alicia's parents uh, two, two weeks ago and yeah. we came home to clean out stuff. And when we were there, like the last four days we were there, we lost this little chicken that like you push the head down and it lays eggs. We couldn't yeah. find it. Flip the house up and couldn't find it. We come yeah. home and Alicia looked at the bottom of Eliza's toy bag. Chicken was in there. So Alicia called her in and asked her if she did it. And she said she stuck it in there because she wanted to play with it here. So she straight up yoinked it. Yeah. So I, I made her I made her FaceTime uh, Nana and apologize. And she started bawling. It was sad. But at least she had remorse. I promise you, she probably got that from the Sanchez jeans, not, not Alicia. So no. And right before, I guess before this happened, I saw her, she would like looked around and then she put these Chinese, these Russian stacking dolls in the pocket. And I was like, what are you doing? And she like got all nervous. I caught her trying to steal the <laughs> Russian stacking dolls. <laughs> yeah. See, so object permanence. So that's when it starts. So this is, this is the most, this is my, this is my opinion. I'm, I'm not sure that so for those of us who have young kids that that's very crucial age, very crucial age. And I'm just saying, because, because that onlooker time is when they start to program in the brain, like you can't see me, here's a wall. So the longer we let them sneak. So uh, it's crazy to me how many parents think this is funny and don't police it. So like, Hey, can I have a cookie? No. Then a kid comes out with a cookie in their hand and they just kind of like walk behind the chair and they eat it. And everyone just laughs. Like, that's funny. You have to police it because they're starting to understand I could sneak around you and they start to have this, this like separate personality where like I'm nice up front and then I'm, I'm mean behind. So you older people understand the Eddie Haskell thing, like leave it to Beaver, like he's super fake in front of parents, super fake, dresses like a church boy. And then behind the scenes, he's like an evil dude who's trying to get everybody to screw up like that Eddie Haskell phenomenon that starts at literally 18 months. I know that's going to freak people out, but I'm just telling you from then on observational learning is the most important. And yeah. observational learning is monkey see, monkey do. So like Valencia will catch me sometimes uh, if, if she says, can I have a popsicle? I'll say one. So I will have a popsicle and a little bit later. I get a second one and they don't think about it. And she's like, Ooh, classic. <laughs> and I look at her. I'm like, uh, yeah, you can go get a second one. You know, so yeah, I forget my classic, own words. Grab me a, a pink, purple and blue one and you can get one. Yeah. <laughs> so i forget i mean I, I really work on trying to be congruent with that uh, i really do and it's just sometimes you don't think about it right um yep. but i promise you that's the most important thing because right there i could break her by saying i'm the man i do this you don't or i'm the dad like zip it yep. you see what i'm saying you, you don't want to do that because she'll start to compartmentalize that so that's a great question but i think the social learning or onlooker learning observational yep. learning vicarious mm -hmm. learning those are the most important because they are watching you 24 7 they don't listen 24 7 but their eyes are on 24 7 that's the All most right. important thing observational learning give us a, a nugget to leave with one action step and let's get out of here all right so the action step would be this wherever you're at wherever your kids at whatever level move move toward that uncertainty like i don't know what i'm supposed to do like i promise you i was confused as heck when I saw Minecraft and Terrence and his buddies would have a Minecraft party, six of them down here still am. playing Minecraft for six hours, by the way, they still play like when they were in college engineer brain, still playing. Still have I no idea. There, what it and like. that music puts me to sleep. So I'm sitting there like, okay, now why, why is that gold ax better than that other one? And they'd be like, no, 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 it's the platinum ax and blah, blah, blah. And so I had to swing 200 times with this ax. I had to swing 20 times with this ax. Like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Now here's why it's really crazy. Then I go to the office and somebody's like, well, he, Nobody really gets along with him at, at his friend group. His friends play baseball, blah, blah, blah. All he does is play Minecraft. So when I start talking to this kid, I'm like, so do you have the granite axe or do you have the you know platinum axe or whatever it is? And, and he would start just going like, uh, I have the platinum and here's why. And he'd start talking about it. And so what I'd go back and ask Terrence questions. Immediately gives common ground. He keeps common ground. And then that is, I'll Google it too, if I don't know, try to figure it out. So if this is your kid, move toward uncertainty, move toward like, what if I put in all this work and my kid doesn't talk to me? Still keep putting in the work, figure it out. Like your kid will have 
a, a line in there. I know it's really weird, but Tyler and I connected on sports. Terrence and I connected on movies, right? Tavian and I connected on articles and books. Like T- Tavian, nerd. Always wanted, he always wanted a problem solve. Yeah, <laughs> like we watch. Literally, when he was home from college, we watched we watched a documentary on a neuroscientist that died, and uh-huh. they realized that he journaled every single one of his patients, and a lot of his data, a lot of his research came from his personal journals. So, yeah, nuts. Just uh, so stuff like that. So I, I'm I'm a little bit of everybody, and I kind kind of just open up that area to connect. So you're like take home. Well, more specifically, you don't even have to be that. You just have to, you have to meet the kids where they're at. We always talk about parenting your individual kid where they're at. So you don't force sports on another kid and you don't force movies on me. No, please don't bring a research article for me to read. That is not. Yeah. Yeah. Like Valencia just, we went to uh, my nephew, um, his, his 10, 12 year old team just won the city championship for that age range. So now they start the state tournament. Sad and Valencia got all into it. She's all excited. She comes home and gets a glove and I see her outside playing. And I ran inside to the house, reached up and get my old piece of fry bread. And I come out to the front yard and her face, if I, oh, I wish I'd have had like a GoPro on her face was like, oh, you're going to play catch with me, daddy. And I was like, yeah. You're and like, we've she, been, I've been waiting for this day my whole life. <laughs> yeah. She's using like what Terrence is her tape's old glove. Like she'd never played baseball. She's never been interested. And all of a sudden I'm tossing her some balls and just because we play catch and, um, you know, so she's pretty coordinated. She could do. So I'm like tossing them around her. I'm looking at Stacy and I was like, she could play and, but she didn't ask to sign up, you know, so I can't yeah. get all too excited. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You're not out of the dance recitals yet or the gymnastics routines. Yes. Correct. Yes, okay. So wherever your kid is at, jump in, dive into, get engulfed in, figure out what they're doing, why yeah. they love it. Ask questions. You don't have to have all the answers, but no. at least let them know you care and involved. That will then open the door for conversation, for meaningful relationships. Yes. To have communication gives you common ground, builds deepens the relationship. Yes. So do it. Get on the ground. Build the foundation by moving toward what's uncertain. You don't know how it's going to end up. But I promise you, it'll end up better than dogs. Where it is right dads now. on the ground. Dads on the ground. Or mogs. And Moms Yoda. on the ground. On the ground too. Or Yoda. All right. <laughs> As always, there are two times to be great: when you feel like it, and when, when you, you don't. don't. Uh, next topic: we're trying to get the brothers on. It's gonna be uh, Sanchez, Dad, Terrence, Tavian, and myself. We'll see what happens. If you got their numbers, text them. Let them know the podcast is wanting. We are longing for Tavian and Terrence to be on here. Other than that, uh, renew your perspective. Move towards uncertainty and find what's awesome about that. Every situation, we love you. Peace. I had to realize what's inside of me. For all of the people that lied to me. For all of the people that said I would fall off. Oh, but what a time to be alive. I wrote this for everyone, feel like they counted out. You need to look in the mirror and tell yourself it's time to be who I am now. Greatness.